Now, as part of our coverage of the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, uh, we speak to a CNN journalist who was in downtown New York City at the time. Richard Roth covered the unfolding events after the first commercial jetliner hit the North Tower of the World Trade Center. He spoke to Sherman Bryce Pease. Roth says he can't believe it's been two decades since that fateful day, and he still looks up whenever a plane flies over Manhattan. From us here at the news desk, it's good night. Richard Roth, welcome to SABC News. Thank you very much, Sharon. Take us back to that day, that Tuesday morning, September the 11th, 2001. How did your day start and how did your day change? The day started exactly in my apartment where I'm speaking to you now, which I normally would never mention, but uh, it's, it's just, uh, if you told me that day would start the way it did. Uh, you know, the night before, CNN New York, was short of reporters and told me at the United Nations by phone, hey, if anything happens in New York tomorrow, you're it. And I said, oh, come on. I mean, I'm, I've got a show. I've got the UN beat. I don't want to be covering a fire or something. And then in the morning, uh, we had a meeting scheduled at CNN on the future of news. That's how quiet it was uh, in the news environment. And the network was maybe adjusting things. And I really didn't want to go to that meeting. As a CNN original, I wanted to stay focused on news. And I'm watching the Today Show. And they said, uh, oh, we're going to show you a picture of the late Howard Hughes, the last picture ever taken of that billionaire. And I said, well, I'll watch that. Uh, I think I can make the meeting in time. And then, boom, you see, the, as everyone knows, that close up. And I recognize certainly the World Trade Center outside exterior. CNN New York started in the lobby of the World Trade Center. I was there for two years, and I just remember yelling out, oh, no. And I jumped in the shower. As I came out, phone call, go down there. Uh, that's how it started for me. And, of course, you were going down there to find a CNN crew, but you're going into chaos, right? So it's not quite what you expected. As you know very well, I mean, the news reporter has to somewhat separate themselves from what's going on. But this was uh, history and mass murder taking place. I risked the subway. I, I could have gotten stuck, but I just said that will get me there faster. I felt like I was the only one who knew on that subway car. And I didn't want to. What, what, what could I do? Turn to someone? I mean, they may have thought I was a lunatic almost. Uh that there weren't devices that would inform people uh, that much then. And when I got out of the subway, you're just two or three blocks away. And I saw the flames. I never saw anyone falling, but you're trying to, how do you find a camera crew in a mass disaster? And I wanted to stay on the street so that maybe they would see me. Uh, but I remember, I remember walking behind Cam I remember walking behind camera crews, hoping CNN New York would see me and would uh, would someone would notice me that that's where I am. I mean, all the producers were calling in. I was still trying to find a camera crew. It was a, a lot of terror in many ways. And of course, just I want you to hone in on this notion of devices. We didn't have the cell phone technology we have today back in 2001. What were you using? How did you managed to communicate with your with your crew, given the fact that a lot of telecoms were down as a result of the attacks, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm using my uh, primitive BlackBerry, which I have a slightly more modern device now, but uh, that was the frustration. And I distinctly remember going up, this is a big moment for me, the New, uh, New York One, a local channel here, an engineer who was standing outside, I didn't know him. And I remember taking my device and saying to him, do you know what's wrong with this? And as that happened, behind my shoulder, the first tower falling was happening. And all I remember is this image of almost like a slinky, a somersaulting building enveloping itself. And then I started running. Uh, I remember not being that steady or pleased. Anyway, a woman said to me, I'll never forget this on the street. Sir, are you OK? I think people could say that to me on any day, but... Uh, it was uh, like you knew the impact of what was happening. And I did. I wanted to avoid the cloud, which everybody down there knew about. It went, the smoke, the ash went every which way. But I remember thinking, God, maybe it's better to just get a little bit of that cloud on you because you can show people, hey, you're actually there. Uh, but thank God, I mean, we know the cancer rates have gone up and uh, things like that. And then I headed over. I still didn't find the crew. And uh, I headed over to the west side of Manhattan, uh, 
toward the river. I don't know why, but I was looking for the crew. Yeah, and I mean, you would get a pretty good vantage point from the side of Manhattan downtown to where these towers were. Are you still a journalist in that moment as you're running, or are you literally just trying to save yourself, or, or are you thinking, I need to get this on camera as soon as possible? Well, I had no communication, uh, so I was kind of shut down. I just felt guilty. Maybe I'd been in the UN and too diplomatic, but I didn't want to run into a store and say, can I use your phone? Because I figured everybody had to use their phone or if it was working, and I'm not sure the landlines were working. So I'm still a journalist, but I also knew that CNN, we have many, many people and we could be live from as we were from a rooftop on our midtown headquarters. I didn't think they were suffering without me. Now, as we know, some networks just have one or two people in New York. It would have been more critical. I probably would have been live describing the action. Um, but I went to the river and there was a line to use a pay telephone, which don't seem to exist anymore. But this is where you put coins in the, uh, the uh, machine and you get to speak to someone. So right. there were 10 or 11 people. It was a line that never moved. Of course, if it was me, I'd say, pick up the phone and, hi, uh, mom, whatever. I'm okay. Fine. I'll call you later. Bye. But instead, who knows what was going on? Each call was taking forever. And I remember looking up at the remaining tower, looking up, looking down at the phone line, looking up. And then I'm the first to see it. I go there. I remember yelling, there it goes. And then shortly after, as you know, as a reporter, you hear so many rumors sometimes. Uh, a policeman yelled out, they just hit the Pentagon. I said, don't spread rumors. I mean, I just couldn't believe it. It was like an instinctive reaction. And, you know, you're cut off. You don't see sometimes the public watching on television from 5,000 miles away is better informed than someone right at the scene. Uh, it, we now know, you know Richard, that you a, know. Few minutes, a few minutes after that, I swear someone, I don't even know, even though they're, they're not a CNN employee, I swear I have this memory of someone saying, isn't that your crew? And I saw the live truck uh, along the West Side Highway. I mean, I was very happy at that point. But I thought when I was on the train, I thought, oh, my God, there's a live camera crew waiting just for me, pointed at the World Trade Center, and I'm missing it. So the pressure was so intense. And then obviously what was going on around you. We now so know that under 3,000 people. Day, almost minute by minute, but I can't remember what I had for lunch yesterday. <laughs> we now know that under 3,000 people perished in the attacks on 9 11. But at the time, Richard, I heard you say that you thought 30,000 people might have died that day. I mean, that's what you were thinking at the, in the moment. New York City Mayor Rudolph Giuliani says the death toll may be more than the New York City uh, people can bear. I think knowing the World Trade Center and having been at work there, I thought there could be 20, 30,000 people. I think obviously if it was an hour or two later, it would be the death toll would have been exponentially skyrocketing. When you look back now, 20 years later, what goes through your mind? What do you think back on? What would you have done differently or what would you have done the same? Uh, I'm sure everyone says this. I cannot believe it's 20 years. Um, it's just, it was a Tuesday, I remember, right? It was a Tuesday afternoon. And uh, going back to what I said earlier, of course, uh, it turns out there is a news environment and news was happening. Um, I guess, uh, you know, it's just sadness. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, including myself, we didn't really know anyone in the towers. I mean, there's like 17 or 18 million people in this area. A lot of the uh, people who were killed, uh, murdered, were in the suburbs, uh, you know, in Central Park, you saw people sunning themselves. It was even though it was the same city, you would never know what was happening downtown. I went back the next morning and I was on a rooftop and I held up pictures of uh, an attack, the Scud missile attack, which I covered in Israel, something like that. And next to uh, the, the both both papers years apart had its war headlines you'd never think you'd see. Um, it's just uh a horrible event, which, of course, the U.S. was not really prepared for, yet you could connect the dots now easily. At the time, you said it was the story of the century. Is that still your view? A very good question. I mean, at the beginning of the pandemic, I said, right, 9-11 is bigger. I mean, uh, maybe not have been a full-fledged pandemic then, but very quickly. I mean, I think uh, somehow COVID uh, overtakes 9-11. You know, it's uncomfortable to rank these. But sheer, you know, you, there's no comparison and the repercussions keep going on. For years after 9-11, the Bureau was preoccupied and, and fearing that there would be another attack. I remember four days later, maybe three days, everyone in the New York Bureau remembers this. I happened to be there. 
And then we got an alert, you know, there's about to be a bombing or something. And I'm running down with everyone else, 22 flights of steps outside. Uh, and you even two or three years later, there was the levels of security, orange threat. And uh, it was, uh, you could be panicky a little bit. I remember warning someone, there's a, there's a possible attack this weekend. I mean, you'd feel like once you've been there, especially down there, you're a little extra, the memories linger. So, well, look, I still look up in the sky. That's me. I look up and I see a plane and I think of it every time, every time. And as you know, there are a lot of planes near and over Manhattan, over the Hudson River. Richard Roth, New York-based correspondent for CNN, thank you so much for sharing your personal memories of 9-11 with us. Thank you for inviting me, Sherwin.